call the Honourable Darren Hughes. Mr Speaker, thank you for the opportunity to speak on the Prisoners and Victims Claims expiry and, applica expiry and application dates amendment bill. Uh, Mr Speaker, I want my colleagues uh, to uh, listen very carefully to my views on this because they're not, the, the, the words I'm about to express are not necessarily the same ones uh, that my colleagues have. I believe, well, I, I am told uh, that this bill is an appalling fraud being committed on the people of New Zealand. Uh, I, I believe, or I'm told, uh, that the fraud being perpetrated on the House and on the public will only re-traumatise victims. Uh, sir, those are not my words. Those are not my beliefs. Well, those are the words, words, are they? words are they? of the Honourable Tony Ryle. Oh! The Honourable Tony Ryle, who in 2004, in, in the most extraordinary what? pantomime way possible, told the House that this kind of legislation was an appalling fraud being committed on the public of New Zealand. Mr Ryle said, when in response to an interjection from Labour members about what he would do, he said, I will stop this kind of legislation right. Right. when I get into government. I will stop this kind of legislation when I get into government. That's what Tony Ryle said. That, that is the kind of consistency and the justice portfolio that we see from Tony Ryle. And the same way in the health portfolio, at question time today, we heard that in opposition, very important to close the wage gap for doctors yes, with right, Australia, right. in government, an impossible thing to do. An impossible thing to do. I will give the Honourable Tony Ryle one piece of credit. I'll give him one piece of credit, more credit than his own colleagues give him. He did say that he'd only stop these kind of payments under a government led by Don Brash. Oh! <laughs> under a government led by Don Brash, he uh, regaled the country in December 2004. But of course, don't forget Tony Ryle was the man who used to skimp along, scarper along rather the parliamentary corridors with a big folder under his arm saying, Te Puki Bypass. Oh, and that was when he was organising the coup for Jenny Shipley to roll Jim Bolger. Oh. So he was on Jenny Shipley's side. When it came to this particular piece of legislation before the Parliament, he was on Don Brash's side and thought he should be Prime Minister of New Zealand with respect to this Prisoners and Victims Claims Bill. But now that it's back before the Parliament, all of a sudden he's in favour of it. But do you know what, sir? Do you know the most amazing thing? Not only did he say these things in opposition, he sat in the chair tonight as Minister in charge of the bill, pushing it through the Parliament. That's what he did. Now, I want to say one thing. Dr Wayne Mapp, a minister I know members opposite are so proud of, when he gets up to answer questions in the House, you can feel the pride radiating from government members as it's like a, a rerun of the great BBC drama as the Right Honourable uh, Jim... What's his name now? The Right Honourable Jim Hacker, Minister of Administrative Affairs, gives his answer. Wayne Mapp said, this bill is a bizarre lottery. Well, having probably never won much of a prize in life, uh, Wayne Mapp uh, would know. Georgina Tehuhu who is, you know, an extraordinary answer of questions with regard to legislation on appropriations. I mean, no one's better in the House. In fact, to be fair, the only place the Minister of Pacific Island Affairs is better than answering questions is on Morning Report. She's pretty good there. She answers good questions there. But, but in the House here, she tells it like she sees it. She said this was a fraud perpetrated not only on the House but on the public. Simon Powell got up in the House as the opposition shadow justice uh, minister after th that was by 2005 because, of course, by the time Simon Powell spoke, there'd been yet another leadership change in the National Party. They'd gone from Dr Brash and arrived at uh, John Key, and so Simon Powell ha had been uh, reinvented in the justice portfolio. He said the problem with this bill is that it re-traumatises victims and National will have no part of it, oh, no. as he led them into the nose lobby. And do you know, do you know what Tony Rowell said? He said... He said, I will not let a figment of the United Nations decide what happens in New Zealand. Well, you know, the United Nations is going to decide whether or not we pass this original legislation, which we're now, through this, uh, this bill, turning into uh, a, a revalidation of this bill, because we weren't going to play, uh, uh, play kowtow to the United Nations uh, Convention on, on torture. But of course, when it came to the United Nations Declarations on the Rights of Indigenous People, not only were we going to sign up to it, we should do it in secret. We had the little uh, the stealth jet flying from Mangata Airport through to JFK in New York, landing with the Minister of Māori Affairs, scurrying across the tarmac and signing up to this declaration because by that stage Tony Ryle believed declarations like this were aspirational. But of course, when it came to this bill, he wasn't going to have a figment of United Nations law taking any part in what we should say about this. He, Tony Ryle said it was window dressing. 
legislation uh, like this. I, sir, I'm just trying to explain why uh, members, before they commit to the third reading, should decide whether or not they vote for it, because members opposite, who I know are such staunch researchers of their own party's history, the, 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 the great thing about the 05 and 08 intake is they have no idea what the National Party has done before, which is why they clap and cheer like performing seals whenever their leaders speak, because they're hearing everything for the first time. The, the, a man with a future in the National Party, and I say this to make sure he doesn't have one, Simon Bridges, <laughs> who I endorse, who I endorse, um, he, uh, he of course spoke with such pride in his government's bill, he'd have no idea that his neighbouring MP, Tony Ryle, had said these things in 2004 and 2005. You know, get this, Tony Ryle of all members, do you know what he said? He said this is nothing more than a public relations exercise, right. this legislation, and uh, yet here we are today passing this law. And, I mean, at least our bill was several clauses, several parts long. This is a bill with only two parts and so uh, only seven clauses, seven uh, discrete clauses, seven deadly sins, you might say. The National Party finished up by saying this bill should be blocked, stopped and wiped, which is exactly what the prisoners and victims claims expire and application dates amendment bill does, doesn't it? Oh, no, sorry. What it does is it gives new... It resuscitates and breathes new light into it. I tell you what, I wouldn't want to take any advice from him, but can I finish, sir, by saying that we should quote somebody uh, who is a man of great substance, a man of pers a, a person who's always over the detail. I can quote from no other person than the Leader of the House, Jerry Brownlee. He said, why would you vote for a bill that just lines up New Zealand with other countries? He said, this bill is out of touch and shouldn't be supported. He also said, this bill was a load of rubbish. Well, we've heard a lot of rubbish from the other side of the House tonight as they've got up and tried to say why they're revalidating a bill just a few years ago they said they were against. I don't mind that they do things like that. I understand that Conservative politicians are always years and years behind where they need to be. Uh, no matter what the issue is, uh, they wait 10 or 20 years and then they say, oh yeah, that's status quo now, I'm Conservative, status quo for me, I'm all for it. All the opposition asks tonight. All the opposition asked tonight is, if you're going to flip-flop on a bill, at least have the good grace to get up and say, you know, we might have been wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Members.